Hey, what's going on, y'all? Hope everyone's having a fabulous day. If you haven't gotten a chance to subscribe to the channel, please do so. I want you to ring that notification bell. That way, when I drop a video, you'll be notified. If you guys um, know, this channel is all about managing your credit. And a lot of times I get people that will call me up and they'll ask me, um, what's the fastest way to remove inquiries from my credit report? How do I manage inquiries? I'm always slick when I, I, I reply because the fastest way to remove inquiries from your credit report is to stop applying for so much credit. Stop incurring all these hard inquiries on your credit report. Give your, your credit report some time to season without you always going back and applying for new credit. There's going to be some things that I'm going to give you guys to help you if you stick around long enough uh, for the video. But um, I do want to make this point first before I go any further, because most of you guys don't understand the damage that you're causing to your credit report when you're applying for so much credit at a time. There's companies like Chase, for example, that it doesn't even matter what your FICO score is. If you have five inquiries in the most recent 24 months, chances are you're not going to get approved for that credit card. And I don't care if you're walking around with an 800 FICO score. So a lot of lending institutions don't want to work with you if you have a whole, you know, if you're applying for so much credit. And most people know I made a video called Don't Be a Credit Ho. And it there's something something about getting into that 650 range or once you start getting these pre-approval letters and you start feeling a little bit more confident about your credit that you feel like, okay, I got to start applying for new credit. So it, the very first step is stop applying for so much credit. Now, if you're one of those that are, you know, barely 600, like I would say anywhere between that 580, 620 range, a lot of times people want to start applying for that Discover It and that Capital One card, but you don't really know if you can get approved for this card or not. So what do you do? Um, if you guys go in the description, I have a, a sheet called a uh, secure credit comparison sheet or something like that. It's a Google sheet. And what I did was on the very first page of this Google sheet, I did a, com a comparison of all the secure credit cards. Um, if you go to page two of the Google sheet, that's when I added like the My Jewelers, New Coast Direct and other uh, accounts that you can use to help build your credit. Well, on the third sheet, what I did was I added links um, that will give you a pre-approval, right? So it's like a soft pull to see if what card you apply for with this financial in institution. Now, there are several companies that you can go to, and there's going to be a lot of videos you can go to that have these pre-approval links on there for different financial institutions. But you guys kind of know how I am. I only want you to work with the financial institutions that are going to be institutions you can work with in the future, right? So um, I included a pre-approval link for Discover It, Capital One, Chase, and Bank of America. So if you go there and you fill out this information, like let's say you you're sitting at, you know, a 600 range and you don't want a hard inquiry on your credit report, but you want to see if you can get approved uh, for a Discover 8 card without incurring a hard inquiry. All you have to do is fill out your information. If they have an offer for you, they'll let you know they have an offer. If they don't have an offer for you, chances are you're not going to get approved. So no need to incur that inquiry on your credit report. If you go in the description of this, like I said, it's, it's in the description. It says something about secure credit card comparison Google sheet. Um, just click on the link. There's no email address or anything you have to fill out. This is just something that I'm trying to make to help you guys deal with your inquiries. Because so many times, like I said, I get people that will say, okay, how do I manage my inquiries? And and I just want to talk to you guys about what 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 is happening. What what is an inquiry? Um, anytime a financial institution requests access to your credit report, any of your data on your credit report to see if you're worthy for a, a financial product, they're going to to put an inquiry on your credit report, right? Because they're look they want to see your data, and so they put an inquiry on your credit report, and that's called a hard pull. That's when somebody else is looking at your credit report. 
Now, a soft pull is when you're looking at your credit report. So the the Google sheet that I was telling you about, those are all going to be soft pulls. They're not going to be hard pulls. But what I want you guys to understand is when you go to let, like, let's say you're applying for a mortgage or a car loan or even a student loan, right? Most people know when you go to a car dealership and I always talk about this is one of the worst ways to buy a car. But when you go to a car dealership and a lot of times you you're working with them to get you lending for your vehicle, they will run your name through a database. And I'm not sure exactly how it all works, but you walk out of that dealership with about 10 to 12 inquiries on your credit report. Well, the way FICO looks at your inquiries in that situation, a lot of times, like let's say you walk out and they ran your name with 10 different financial institutions to see if you can get a vehicle. A lot of times people think those 10 inquiries on your credit report are looked at as 10 inquiries and FICO only looks at it as one inquiry, right? If you apply for, let's say you're shopping for a financial, uh, uh, financial loan for a vehicle or a student loan or a mortgage, if you do that within a 45 day period, um, chances are it's going to be looked at as only one inquiry. But like I always say, that's probably one of the worst ways that you could go about buying a car. Um, if you want to buy a car, I always say work with your financial institution, build a relationship with your credit union and get your funding before you go to the dealership. That way your negotiations are on a completely different level. And um, I talk about that a lot in my videos, but back to inquiries, when you're talking about getting all these inquiries and managing your inquiries, you have to stop actually applying for so much credit. If you want a template to, to get inquiries removed, just email me, Kenny at creditliving.com. I probably shouldn't say that because I'm going to get a lot of you that send me an email requesting information on inquiries but uh, maybe what i'll do is i'll leave a little uh template for your inquiries also in the description but i really want you guys to to stop applying for so much credit stop being a credit hoe and and look at your credit report and let it season because so many times you have a situation where you have somebody that's just starting out and they're building their credit and they're not letting their credit season. That length of history is really important because once you start getting into the 680 range, you plateau, right? And now all it's about is length of time. What is what is your average length of history? So you might look at it right now and say, oh, it's just a whole bunch of inquiries right now, but you know, it, it's not going to affect me that much. But over time, later on down the road, you're going to come to regret that because it's not hard to get to that 650, 680 range. And then you're going to plateau. It's you're going to have very few uh, points of progress every month. And I get people that call me up all the time. Hey, Ken, I'm sitting at a 690, but I'm not I'm not my, my credit score is not jumping anymore. And it's about time now. And if you just Go out and, and this touches on another topic. A lot of times I get people that ask me, they go, Kenny, should I apply for buy jewelers, new coast direct, self lender, two secure credit cards all at the same time? Absolutely. Do it all right now. And that way, over time, you don't have to apply for any more credit for at least another year. You let just those things sit on your credit report. You're going to be fine. But what you don't want to do is, OK, I'm going to get something today. Six months later, later, I'm going to get something else. Six months later, I'm going to get some. If you just go out and get all your credit right now, let that build and then just sit back. Stop applying for so much credit. I got people that credit one, Indigo, um, Allo. There's so many different credit cards out here. If you want to go out and bang all these credit cards, you can, but it's going to affect you in the future. There are financial institutions that you're going to want to do business with. Your very first company you want to do business with is a, your credit union is probably going to be the first credit card that you want to get. So you have, yes, 
we have our credit card that you, you know, chances are you're going to get approved for as long as you can breathe, right? As long as you can breathe, we have a secure credit card for you. The, the credit living secure credit card, you will get approved for it. Absolutely. You will get, chances are you will get approved for the open sky secure credit card. You will, but you should go to your community bank, your local community credit union, and, and tell them what you're trying to do and establish a relationship with that financial institution. And chances are, if you tell them that you're looking for a secure credit card, um, that you can start building credit, they're going to love you because that's who they want to work with. They want to work with people in their community, just like you that are trying to build their credit, that are looking for a financial institution that they can grow with. And you can grow with the credit union a lot more than you can with the Wells Fargo Capital One or any other these these other financial institutions because there's gonna come a time when you want to apply for a car or something like that and they're gonna deny you because they have such stringent requirements that you're just not at yet and you want a company that you can go into and say okay I've been with you for a year I had a secure credit card with you for a year I managed my credit for a year I'm not at the greatest credit but I'm at a decent credit score right? 620, something like that. And then you want to apply for a vehicle with that cap or that uh, credit union. They're going to love to see you actually taking the steps to build your credit. That should be the credit cards that you guys are looking at. And yeah, I would love for you guys to sign up for um, our, our credit, our credit card, right? But the reality of it is I want the best for you right? If I want the best for you, I got to give you the best information. And, and honestly, if I was in your position where I'm just starting out, I would either start with my financial institution, or if I'm able to get like a state department or discover it or something like that, where it's going to graduate, of course, I would start with those cards. That's where I started. But to go out and start applying for so many different credit cards, when you're starting out, you're doing more damage than you think. Right. Because a lot of times people say, oh, it's only, you know, 20 points or 10 points that it's going to affect you. But you're affecting a lot more than that. And when you're talking about getting funding for business credit, that's a whole different ball game. If you got a whole bunch of inquiries on your credit report and you're trying to get business uh, funding, they're going to look at you as, as some as a credit hoe. You're a credit hoe. You just go out here and apply for credit. And you're a high risk to our financial institution. And we're not going to lend to anyone that is a high risk. And you could have a 700 FICO score, an 800 FICO score. If you're applying for so much credit, um, you're going to be looked at as a high risk. Okay. So if you guys haven't gotten a chance to subscribe to this channel, please, you know, please subscribe. Um, if you guys, you know, if you guys like the information, give me a thumbs up. And other than that, I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. You guys stay blessed. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.